Hi everyone, today I'm going to be telling you about cloud formation and precipitation. So the first question, describe the formation of precipitation and explain the differences in rain, snow, sleet, and hail. So the picture on the left shows basically what the water cycle is. Um, so the first step is the sun heats the ocean and then the ocean water evaporates and rises into the air. The water vapor cools and condenses to become droplets, which form clouds. And then if enough water condenses, the drops become heavy enough to fall to the ground as rain and snow. Um, so then how is preci precipitation formed in the clouds? Um, in the warm clouds, saturated air rises rapidly, and as it rises, it cools. And this forces condensation that creates these droplets of water in the cloud. Um, and as more condensation is added, these drops continue to grow in diameter. Um, and these droplets are carried aloft in the rising cloud, and they collide and coalesce with each other. And they continue to grow in size, and their weight increases until it overcomes the, the upward force of the rising air. And they begin to move down, and essentially falls down as rain or snow. Um, so explain the differences in rain, snow, sleet, and hail. So the picture on the left is a really great picture that shows um, the differences between snow, sleet, freezing rain, and rain, and how it all falls down. So up closer to the clouds, you have colder air, and then the rest of it's um, warmer air, and then close to the ground, depending on the weather, um, it begins as cold, cold air again. So with the rain, rain is just water droplets that fall to the ground and it's still in a very warm atmosphere. Snow is ice crystals that fall and they do this because they are formed in the atmosphere when it, when it is below freezing and they fall as snow. And as long as the atmosphere remains below freezing, it will hit the ground. Um, Slee is rain that falls from the clouds, but it freezes before reaching the ground. And then hail is a product of high updraft from clouds high up in the sky where a temperature is freezing. And that's where um, it's a little bit unstable up there. The second question is define air mass and describe how they are classified. In relation to air masses, describe why Oklahoma in particular is susceptible to tornadoes. So, air mass is immense bodies of air characterized by similarity, temperature, and moisture, and it is the cause for drastic change in weather patterns. So, in relation to air masses, Oklahoma is susceptible to, to tornadoes because um, of the warm air that comes from the Gulf of Mexico, the hot dry air that comes from Arizona and New Mexico, and then the cool dry air up north from Canada. And all of these air masses, they all meet up in Oklahoma or nearby states like Kansas or Texas. And Oklahoma is part of the tornado alley, which is the perfect flat alleyway that allows a straight shot for all these different air masses to collide with each other and create some storms. The third question is, why is lifting of air important? And discuss two processes of lifting. Um, the lifting of air is important because it is the cause of cloud formation and precipitation. And there are four processes of lifting, but I am just going to be talking about two of them. So one of them is orographic lifting, and it is when air is forced to rise over a mountainous barrier, which is shown in that top picture. So you see that there is a green side of the mountain and just like a gray, dry area of the mountain. So you see that there is moist rising air going up that mountain on that green side. And because of that rising, moist rising air, you have precipitation that comes down. And then all that cold air just kind of goes over the top of the mountain and continues to go down it. Um, the second process of lifting is frontal wedging or frontal lifting and it's when masses of warm air and cold air collide which is also known as a front. So this cooler denser air acts as a barrier kind of the same deal with the orographic lifting and 
because that cold air and that warm air kind of collide with each other, um, the warm air will rise up into the atmosphere and then essentially turns into storms. And this method is responsible for most of the precipitation that occurs here in Oklahoma.